Really thankful for you guys jumping in and watching this video last week. Had a bit of a 5,000 views and listens there. So super excited on that. It is the five things I've learned for the week with my fantasy tip there for the weekend. We'll see here that 38 nil. Currently the Dolphins over the Dragons. I did get this tip right. I changed my um my manly tip to, to Roosters, think, uh, sadly, but uh, made sure I got this one correct. And yeah, what does it clearly show? The Dragons are probably a little bit on the pretenders side and the Dolphins were a clear bounce back target this week after a pretty poor outing last week. The Cowboys were pretty good at that. So in this one, guys, we've got a few things to go over. The three players who stood out for me this week, the best game to watch and why, what surprised me this week, the teams who I think are going to struggle and are likely going to be fantasy avoids, and then the players who have clearly improved from last year. So guys, kicking off with the first one, the three players who stood out, to me this week, and uh, really, I think one of them is the Reese Walsh show. He's definitely, he's going to feature in that last one as well, I think, personally, just uh, as a guy that is very clearly a, a standout target and improver from from last year as well. So it's a big speaker of both of them now. And uh, yeah, just his ability to get in, in, get in the work a little bit more as well has been the has been the biggest thing for me with, with Walshy this year is is yeah the, the meters gained are up he's kicking a lot more obviously the goals at the end of this game but he is just electric to watch he's one of the hardest players to stop they give him so much room to run and he just continues to do great things so he's a clear standout this week um and obviously the sharkies as well were were a big winner there over the dogs and um you know nico hines with his defense again and his ability to to drag this team around was very very helpful there but you know it's Hosking who absolutely crushed it this week again and and just shows that he's someone that like in the back end of last year kind of slowed down a little bit and then he's he's really improved as a player like you know for his smarts to be able to hit into the line and be ready for an offload or you know to leap above the pack like he's someone that's definitely clearly had a, an improvement from this year and, and has moved into a side in the Raiders and absolutely stood out from day dot um, so that's really, really helpful for for their side there. Obviously, in the um, <clears throat> in the Storm team and and the Waz there, like you can see, Luke Metcalf really is standing out and improving in that side. But um, you know, Joe Chan was was really nice as well, and and you know was able to lay on that inside pass and and similar to that with with Eli Katoa. But it's it's very hard to not say that that Ryan Pappenhausen was a clear standout in this week's uh, in this week's game. Like he. After the game that he had last week, all the things that have happened to him, I've missed your pap. And uh, a big shout out to you had to be in this video there. Obviously, plenty of other guys to, to talk about. Guys like Isaac Tungo absolutely brained it as well on that right-hand side. So that's going to round out that first one. Number two, guys, the best game to watch and why. It's clearly was the Storm versus the Warriors game. Special shout out mentioned to the Panthers and the Eels. That was really, really good viewing as well. Rabbitohs weren't good enough for it to to be you know, featured in this game. The Cowboys versus Knights was a, obviously a fun one from a Cowboys fan, but I think it was a little bit under the level of the Storm and the Warriors, and obviously the Panthers and the Eels there as well. So Storm was the one of the greatest tries ever. That clearly kicks it you know uh, kicks it up another level. On top of that, the fight back from you know the Warriors to push into the lead away from home, uh, and then and then the Storm to come back over the top at the end. And, and it's very clear to me those two teams are going to be high on the ladder this year very similar to that of the Panthers and the Eels the Eels look a very strong outfit and they always play well against some Panthers if they could have sorted out that defensive those defensive issues on their left side defense I think that that would have uh you know given them much more of a chance to really end up in a in a good situation here heading into you know potentially winning that game right so they're the they were the two standout games both are clearly teams are going to be in the top eight, you'd imagine Broncos are going to be there as well. There's five. And at the moment, I don't think much has changed from my top eight and my brackets that I was going with. Rabbitohs, the clear worry at the moment in sort of the bottom of that eight there. Cowboys could potentially move up into that. Raiders look like they're fighting for that bottom eight position. You've got the Eagles there who look great. And I had them in sort of that five to eight. I'm going to keep them there. Roosters as well. They were pretty solid in there. So they did uh, allow a few errors to creep into their game, which cost them this one. And obviously Eagles at home, that might be different if it was away from home as well. So I don't think much changes from my my bottom eight as well. And then 
looking at you know my nine to, to 17 there dragons unfortunately will stick down there and and the dolphins are you know showing why they can be a team that's fighting for that yeah you know, bottom eights uh efforts as well so Nothing really changes on my ladder at the moment. A few of the teams are getting exposed at the moment. And now we'll talk about that. I'll just jump to number four. They're the teams who will struggle and, and the fantasy avoids for this week. So very, very clearly it is the dogs. I'm a little bit worried about the, the the bunnies as well, especially with this run that they have. So obviously Murray needs to get back into the 13 role, but outside backs for the bunnies, apart from Latrell, aren't scoring very well at the moment. So I would be avoiding those guys, like obviously Jacob Gagai is out of this side now, but you know, Tass is scoring poorly. Does White and come in and, and play better? That's where I'm worried about with the with the bunnies at this stage. The dogs are a team I don't think you want too many players from. Some of the middles, like the Currens and stuff, are gonna have to do a lot of work. But outside of that, you probably don't want too many more than what we already have. We're probably gonna be trying to delete a few of those guys as well. And yeah, they're definitely a worry. The Tigers are big, big worry guys, so Outside of that, like the, the Knights aren't playing crash hot at the moment, too crash hot. You know, if you've got Ponga and these types of guys, they, they're they a team that are good enough to score points and I think they'll eventually get there um, for sure. And uh, yeah, Tigers are definitely clearly a team we want to avoid apart from Lockie Galvin, their best player, uh, and at the price as well. You know, outside of him and, and Appy Coruscant, there's not too much fantasy relevance at this stage. Like you got Samuel Fainu who ended up playing bigger minutes, but they did have obviously an injury to Stafford Toa, which um, you know, kept him on there for a bit longer as well. So they're the couple, probably two two to three of the teams at the moment that you'd likely be looking to avoid. Dragons are a little bit on that list now that they couldn't even get close anywhere near that of, of where the Dolphins are at at this point. 38 nil with two minutes to go. It's not great viewing. Hammer's got three tries. It's um yeah plenty going on. So that's, um, that's where the Dragons are at as well. Not super likely you want to be looking into those guys when yeah, even Sully like was doing doing okay with his running right, but the um the points aren't clearly going to come his way. Similar to that with Flanagan, like you're looking at those guys right now, and and they're probably avoids. And then even like with Little didn't score that well, um, and none of their other back rollers and stuff were able to to score great just because of the fact that their team's getting absolutely pummeled right now. So it's not great viewing. Hammer's doing great. Yeah, even if you got Bostock in your side, awesome stuff. Um, he'll make some money for you. And then, you know, from the from the forwards there, we saw Aiken do okay. Max Plath, I wish, just, wish he wasn't priced so high. Uh, but they all have a buy next week as well. So Dolphins players, when they come up against a better team, they'll struggle a little bit, but they definitely have attack in them, which is good. So that's where we're at with number four. What surprised me this week? The Dragons one didn't surprise me. I suppose the... How do we say this? What surprised me? I just think that there wasn't a lot, was there? I suppose that like was really out of the too far out of out of depth and out of the realm. To be honest with you, like you can say the Raiders and this absolute dominance, but you do look at the Tigers and, and and what they threw up there, and it wasn't great. To be honest with you, there that there wasn't a lot of of upsets in this week. So a lot of it was um was very straight up and down. I, I suppose it's yeah some of the fantasy scoring can be. A little bit up and down on on this front. I did think the Roosters would be in this clash a little bit more. Like they kind of came back a little bit and and just didn't really show much. And, and the amount of talent, the amount of quality that they have in this team, they just they just still don't seem to to gel that much. Like you know, Eagles Brooks looked amazing. Like he's someone actually I, sh- I should say um, in this one that actually stood out like crazy. Lukey Brooks and he even took over control a little bit more than um than what DCE did at times in his running game in, in this in this squad when they can get him early ball on the back of a bit of a run on with um through their forwards he's he's someone that um is absolutely can can be absolutely dominant so he's one I should have actually said in that first one as well um with that one so not a lot actually surprised me this week guys and I'm sure there will be a few times where where things do and maybe just the the quality of of Teague Wilton and what he provided down that left hand side for the Sharks was a was a big one and and the uh, the Adam Elliott double, hey, that's for sure. Um, also, had a bit. There's a bit of chatter around. Uh, one of the guys having a laugh in the comments about my my talk around. I think Smithies and getting him to free the arms, and he said that that should be the the Jamie Brown catchphrase with the the singlets and, and freeing the arms. So we're going to make that a thing. Um, we'll take some time, but yeah, free the arms. That's uh, the the Terrell May special of uh, getting that offload away. That's for sure. So number five, guys. Players who've clearly improved from last year. I wanted to give uh, James Tedesco a special mention, guys, 
because he was absolutely getting smashed last year and he looks so much better running the footy well, making correct decisions. Yes, this game didn't work out perfectly for him and his team, but in both games so far, he's looked awesome and he's exactly what you you need from yeah, your, your captain of, of your club. That's for sure. So he's, he's been a big standout. And obviously Luke Brooks uh, has taken a step up as well, I think, in his play. Um, the efforts there from... Yeah, some of the some of the Warriors boys as well, like with Tain Tulpiki, just showing his his skill and output. Um and then yeah, just Hopgood taking in like another leap. Like he just shows that he can do this on a on a weekly basis as well. So there are a few other guys that, that really stood up and, and stood out, that's for sure. And and some of the young guns from from the Broncos, Jesse Arthur's taking a leap for sure. And um and D Mariner, those couple of guys there were awesome. And uh yeah, that's probably the biggest part with them. And we'll finish it off with the with the fancy tip of the week, guys. And this one's fairly simple. Last week, I spoke about trying to go for the correct mid-ranger and, and Terrell, Terrell May was the correct mid-ranger this week. The guy that could make you some good money and score really well. You know, the other option was Zach Hosking. If you went Terrell May and Zach Hosking, you had a bumper of a week. They were all the mid-range guys. If you went looking up top, you saw Toho Harris. You saw, you know, Taylor May. You saw Tom Trebojevic. A lot of these top tier guys, Cam Murray's, McInnes, didn't score to their potential. Unless you and you know Payne Haas as well. Unless you went to sort of Isaiah Yo, then the top tier guys weren't great. There weren't really any cash cows that stood out apart from Galvin, right? Um, but yeah, we found that out after that video as well. So he's going to be the standout pick this week. I just think guys, you're going to be careful with your trades this week because there's Galvin's, there's you know Finnefuiaki, these kind kind of guys, Tommy Talao. He looks like he's out, so that probably hurts a little bit. Bostock's going to be, uh, he's not going to be playing this week. So there's, there's a bunch of things to look at with your um, with your trades on the low end. But again, there's those mid-range guys. And, and we do have to be extra careful now with the Hoskins, with the Smithies, with these types of players with um, yeah, the potential for, for guys to come back and steal some minutes from them or positions. So that's a question mark you got to look at. If you're owning sort of those two, you're owning potentially a Rapana a Tainto Piki, a, a Keanu Kini, these types of guys. You've got next week, Harry Grant, Pap out, Joe Chan out. This next two weeks of trades is going to be so important. So make sure the only trade out guys, I think, in, in my personal opinion, guys that are injured. So the Lukies, you know, these types of players here. Make sure you're setting up this week, I think, most likely setting up this week to cover for position. So I currently have, you know, Levi as my hooker cover, so that's okay if he keeps his spot. But do you have half cover? Do you have center or wing fullback cover for Pap next week? These are some of the questions, especially if Pap's out next week and then you have Tain Picky out next week as well. If if Chance comes back, potentially lose Keeney as well, if that's who you've got also. Um, you know, Bostock's out for this coming week. There's... There's lots to, to think about. You and Aiken, if you jumped on him as well, right? All all guys you need to think of being out of your size next week. So make sure that you make the correct trade because it can set you back a few weeks plus just max trading each and every week. And that's not exactly what we want to do is, is to go into each week using a double trade, double trade. And then we get to round seven, triple, quadruple, you know, whatever it is that you decide to do. So obviously cash making and the points are the key. Now that we have a couple of games sample size, you can make a little bit more of an educated decision based on the role that these players have, etc. Right, So be sure not to take too many big risks here and just get the pick right. Get the guy that's getting some decent points, get the guy that's making some money, and you'll be off on your way to, to getting into a really good position here. Looks like I'm going to be a little bit outside where I was ranked last year. So end up 38 nil there. Uh, a little bit outside where I was ranked from last year. Yeah, probably five or 6,000 ranking spots back from where I was after round two. And uh, yeah, it just means that surely it's the opposite and I go better than 101. I make the top 100 this year. But um, yeah, that that we'll speak about in, in tomorrow's review of the two games. But a few decent things happened in the last two games that kind of helped me out. A few average things at that as well. But um, guys didn't go absolutely nuts who I didn't own, which was helpful. So yeah. Have a look at your ranks, guys. See where you're at. Fantasy-wise, we'll jump in and go through those last couple of games tomorrow once we've had updates in in the morning. Uh, cannot wait for that video. Thank you so much for being here for the five things I learned and the fantasy tip of the week. Really appreciate all of you guys, and we'll catch you in the next video.